Welcome to Live from the Gardens, a Phanomorph podcast about animals and how to be a convincing animorph. This week we'll be talking about the king cobra and snakes in general, which is the animal, the main morph we encountered in Animorphs number 20, The Discovery, a Marco book, uh, which is a book we talked about last week. This week, uh, whoops, I said that already. Uh, my name is Mikhail, the host. I'm Brayden, an inconveniently timed beeping that uh, didn't actually make it into the final p- production. Nice, thank you. And we are joined once again by the infamous at this point, Adam Heap. Do you mean, How are you, Adam? What do you mean infamous? What have I done? Um, because you were our only guest for a long time, and then we sort of built up some lore. So you gotta listen <laughs> to the show. What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, we, we talk about you all the time. Um, in our continuity, you are a sorcerer. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, well, I suppose it makes sense. For anyone who didn't listen to the Megamorphs number one episode, Adam was our guest on both of those episodes and joined in with us on our first mega quiz. Uh, but I know Adam largely from the Animorph Discord, which for anyone who is not a part of that yet, I recommend looking it up, searching it down. Adam, you run that Discord, am I right? Yeah, I run it. Just barely. Well, I, I, I just about cope. Put it that way. <laughs> it's gotten huge, hey, since the last time we talked. It has, yeah. It, it keeps getting more people. And yeah. it's... Uh, but yeah, the Discord, there's tons of stuff on there. Lots of fan art, a lot of fan theories, a lot of discussion every day. It was it was like, I, I, when I first joined the Discord, I left the notifications on because I was like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to like see everything that happens on here. And it was fine because it would be like once or twice a day people would talk. Now I had to turn it off because I would bury all my other yeah. notifications yeah. and <laughs> just Discord stuff. It's so active now, which I is awesome. I didn't think it would kick off the way it did. Uh, it's, it, I reckon it still has a bit of a way to grow. Um, I tried to add RP channels um, that are separated depending on which role you choose when you sign up. Oh, so no, they all every... turned into sex chats, didn't they? No. No, unfortunately. They're still pretty good. Cause I, because uh, I have access to all of them, I can spy on everyone. I can just <laughs> see all the little conspiracy theories going on. But that hasn't happened yet, but I, I'm sure sometimes. I'm also hoping to get another Animorphs Against Humanity to game going soon. Yeah, which is like a Cards Against Humanity online, but with Animorphs theming. Yeah. Marco's driving. Yeah, you were mentioning. Also, you had an interview with Michael Grant on the Discord. I certainly did, and I forgot to record it properly. Oof. That's okay, because I read the transcript. Yeah, we, we wrote a <laughs> transcript, but um, yeah, that was my bad. I, I, ho- I got him involved. I got it all hosted. I got everything set up. I got people into it. But there was an issue with the recording. So by the time it finished, I looked at the recorded data. I found that his side of it was blank. And I was like, oh. Hey, man, those are, these are exclusive, exclusive interviews. Mm. If you miss it, if you're not there, fuck you. But I That's am, your fault. I am thinking. <laughs> I, I know that K.A. is very busy at the moment. She seems to be putting out books left, right, and center. Totally. But if she goes quiet for a little while or she has a bit of a break, uh, I would like to get a revolved Discord. That'd be uh, awesome. Do a KA interview. Uh, obviously, she doesn't know anything of that. She might turn around and say no, but that is something I might try to do in the future. Yeah, I would tune in for that for sure. Um, I like how involved Michael is with like the fandom to the extent yeah. that he shares like Animorphs memes about butts. Yeah, man. That's his He's sort of style. Guy. He's very active on Twitter, but I won't go into. Yes, I won't go into that. Um, so those of you who are keenly paying attention, I'm sure you've noticed that Tessa is not here today. Who's Tessa? Uh yeah, exactly. At this point, what, what? who is Tessa? Yeah. No, Tessa couldn't be here. She had to. Uh, it was like a secret government mission or something. She couldn't really tell us what mm-hmm. the problem was, but uh, I killed something to do with Obama and clones of Obama. Yeah. Somebody cloned Bama. <laughs> cloned Bama. Dime of Bama. <laughs> Go so, uh, room off. so fans of Tessa, sorry, I guess. Just spam her Twitter or whatever and let her know what the hell her problem is. And get her priorities straight. Yeah. What do you mean fans uh, of Tessa? I, that's also a good point. Shit. Man, this is going to turn a full blast when Tessa listens to this. She's going to be crying. I'm the All new right. Tessa. <laughs> okay. Uh, but the reason we've asked Adam here today is because... You have a background with reptiles, am I right? 
I have a background, yeah, in reptiles, specifically the snakes and cobras. Right. So we figured, why not? That's a perfect expert to have on our Live from the Gardens episode. So the way it's going to work today is Adam is going to ask us the questions. Me and Braden will provide what passes for answers on this show. <laughs> and and then Adam will give us the inevitable real answer. Uh, Does that sound good? They're not too difficult. You know, I thought I'd keep it layman's. Good. Because we're basically one level below layman. Yeah. On this show. <laughs> we make one layman when we hug. Yeah. <laughs> God. Okay. Uh, I'm the man, Braden's the lay. Well, why don't we just jump right into it, Adam? Why don't you hit us with our first snake question? Yeah. Oh, God. So much pressure. Um, question one. Are all cobras poisonous? So let's start with Braden. King cobra, garden cobra, uh, pink cobra. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Bat yeah. Bat yeah. cobra. Cobra commander. Cobra commander. <coughs> sex cobra. <laughs> Um, those ones they make condoms out of, the ones they put in tequila bottles. No, not all cobras are uh, poisonous, venomous. Uh, no, not all cobras are poisonous. Sort of correct. It was actually a trick question. Oh, oh the first one's a trick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, was the trick that you said poisonous, yeah. but snakes aren't poisonous, they're venomous. Uh, there's only a couple of snake species that are poisonous, but yeah, um, cobras belong to the group Elapid, uh, Elapidae, and they are a group of venomous snakes. So okay. all cobras are venomous. But Damn, none of them son. Are poisonous. Where'd you find that? Well, usually in India, uh, Africa, <laughs> Middle East. <laughs> well, okay, I have a question. If a if a That's cobra breaking is, the format. Yeah, shut up, Brayden. I'm the <laughs> boss. <laughs> we shut have up, someone Brayden. who actually knows what they're talking about here. I need to get as much information as possible. If something is venomous, is it not also poisonous? Because that venom is in its body, right? <sighs> poisonous means that if you eat it, you die, right? Well, yeah. Um, if, for instance, you 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 took a cobra, uh, the 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 poison, I was saying bloody poison, I the, the venom is kept yeah. in venom sacs at the back of the head. Um, now, I've never so tried this if you this ate myself. the head, if, if, if you, you would if die. If you ate the venom sac, then, yeah, technically you, you've, inge you've ingested a toxin. Yeah. So you but does it work without good. going into like an open wound, like direct into the bloodstream? Or wouldn't your stomach just digest mm. the technically protein? It's something I could look up. I've I've never actually um, looked up whether eating a cobra's head will be poisonous or venomous. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the maybe sort of thing. Our, um, maybe this is our first live from the gardens, live from the field experiment. We get a cobra and uh, get Tessa to bite its head off. Okay. No, no, <laughs> get it's Tessa fine. To do it. It's a delicacy. <laughs> Uh, uh, but, but yeah, poison is where something's ingested, so poison berries, um, something like that, or wherever you, when you touch something. Right. Uh, venom is where it's injected. So yeah. snake, uh, mm -hmm. certain snakes will have fangs that they, they, they bite in, and they're hollow fangs, and they deliver venom through those fangs. In which case, it goes into your bloodstream, and uh, you won't last very long. F funnily enough, one of the things I, I found recently was I, was I was looking up some snake stuff and someone put on like a, a list of facts that they put that all snakes with round pupils are non-venomous and all snakes with slit pupils are venomous. Huh. Do you think that's true? What would you think? I don't think that's true. That seems wrong. Braden. Which, what would you, this isn't one of the official questions. Oh, okay. yeah. This, this um, is a tangential ramble. I think that's got to be false. Like, how on earth would that track, you know? Yeah, you're both... It, it is false, and I don't know why this was on, on a fact list. Because if, if it was the case, then I'd already be dead. Ooh. And also, we live in a world where the word fact no longer means the like literally a fact. No, no, it's it's disgrace. Remember for those like it's... two hot seconds where like the the term fake news was brand new and like everyone was saying we live in a post fact world. <laughs> yeah, I do remember that. That was awful. <laughs> I just hate that. Fact world. <laughs> uh, Donald Trump. 
He's a good laugh. Welcome to he is a, a good laugh. political podcast. <laughs> right, shall Friend we? Um, of the podcast, we... Donald Trump. Wait, what would our What would our political podcast be called? Prince Trump, War Prince Trump. What? Well, it would also, be, be, a it would also be about animorphs. <laughs> Somehow, we we theorize which <laughs> political leaders are Yerks and which are secretly Andalites. Ooh. The uh, the Andalites would have to build a great wall mm-hmm. and put it in space so the Yerks can't pass it. Yeah, like uh, what, gle- what's that called? What's that called? There's a name for that in fiction. Like uh, it's a something shell. Ghost in the shell. No, no, like a like a physical layer wrapped around an entire planet. Uh, litmus. No, that's the wrong word. That's a. That's what's an, the What's the uh, first layer? Of snow the, globe. The crust. Ah, there it is. That's what snow I was globe. <laughs> okay, what's the second question, Adam? <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> okay. What is the longest venomous species of snake? The longest, like physically the longest? Yep, yeah, physically, well, yeah, physically the longest venomous species. Okay. Uh, On metaphorically longest as well. <laughs> yeah, okay, if, I have a good if you wanna, for that. If you want to put a metaphorical one in there as well, be my guest. <laughs> what's, oh, what's the name of that giant, uh, oh, I'll come up with it, don't worry. Norse, the, it's Norse mythology and it's a giant worm. Is it Nidhogg? Nidhogg, yeah. Nidhogg. It's actually a dragon. It's sometimes displayed as a worm because mm. uh, the Norse spelled the word for dragon was Wyrm, like W-Y-R-M. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it's I see, yeah. Nidhogg. Are these questions, yeah, a- are, are these, is this format allowed to delve into the realms of unreality? I what assumed it was real. I, have you seen the documentary Thor, Thor 2, no. and Thor Ragnarok? Uh, it's pronounced yeah. Thor. <laughs> Four? Thor. <laughs> oh, wait. What if there's a fourth Thor movie and they just call it Thor 4? Or just... Thor. No, I can't think of a better one. Fourth Thor? <laughs> the fourth Thor? Thor. <laughs> uh, anyways, that's my answer. The uh, the historically accurate Nidhogg who gnaws at the root of the world tree Yggdrasil. Am I right? No. Shit. <laughs> uh, it's actually a cobra. The oh, king cobra. I feel like to I should have known that. So they, they, can, they can grow up to... They can grow up to about 19 feet. So, so Wait. Wait, 19 what? feet? That was the, lo- That's... the largest um, captive animal. That is insanely long. Uh, That's... Got up to about 18 and a half feet. Just over 18 no, and a half feet. No, I can't sleep anymore. That is like that. That's as bigger than the room I'm in right now. Like, well, Jesus yeah, they, they usually grow to uh, around ten feet, so a couple of feet below, a couple of feet over. They'll oh, get thank to God, only half below. that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Oh, so much more manageable. Things about reptiles, um, non-avian reptiles, they don't actually stop growing. So they'll have oh. they'll they'll be born. Uh, they'll go for the usual juvenile growth acceleration. Say um, they're like us in that they'll they'll have a big growth spurt and then they'll become adults, and that growth will slow to a stop in us. But their right. growth doesn't actually stop; it slows significantly. But they will keep growing, say a millimeter or two a year, or maybe a bit more, maybe a bit less, depending on the species. Because obviously, so snakes range kept... in size. You get little little thread snakes, um, uh, l- little tiny ones, but they're the little more like a little noodle garden snake. Uh, uh, if you like take really good care of a cobra, would it just like it could it live to be a hundred years old? No, uh, snakes do okay. not tend to. Uh, snakes usually the longer living species would be about twenty five years. Okay, so they have the same issue as as humans, where it's like eventually your cells just die. Eventually, like they can't. Eventually, yeah. you just you just can't deal with life anymore. All right, they just uh, get it, really it's, sad. The, it explains a why friends have left them. They yeah. uh, they got told like you have a beautiful soul, but it's not mine, and then left, and then they just give up. They don't get invited to That's mating really balls something. anymore. Because <laughs> uh. some snakes do mate in mating balls. Uh, I believe it is the it's a type of boa, and they well, that's sh- horrifying. They will they're usually about there'll be one female, and then between like ten and twelve males, and they'll just like get into a big ball and mate for weeks, months. 
<coughs> months. <coughs> sorry. Sorry. But yeah, usually about 10, 12 males will just get around this one female and they'll just mate for ages. Now, now what's ages? Yes. What are we talking about ages? That is this, how long, ages can mean a couple of things when we're talking about animal gangbangs. Like, is it like dolphins where it lasts multiple days? Weeks or months they'll spend in these balls. Really? Yeah. Well, I know what I'm doing with my next weeks or months. <laughs> well, that's the, th- the, the thing about snakes is they can last a long time without eating. A hell of a long time. Because they're cold-blooded, right? Uh, a, that's a large part of it, yeah. Hey, I'm a so snake. Yeah. I can go a long time without eating, but I'd die if I didn't eat out. Know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah. Hey, I'm a snake and I can fuck your bitch for weeks. <laughs> you are so immature. It's, it's unbelievable. It hasn't changed at all. No, no, it hasn't at all. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Which is good. It, it's kept its. it's That's it's, your hentai <laughs> fuck beast, Mikhail. Uh, I'm a snake and I can fuck your bitch for weeks. <laughs> Shit. That's way worse. Oh. But you know, you know how snakes usually do it, though, don't you? It's like the weird uh, fake penis thing, isn't it? Pseudo penis. Yeah, hemi penis. It's not. Te- it's, they're not. They're not technically penises. They're 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 like penises, but there's two of them. It's a hemi penis, and they look really weird. They do look really yeah. weird. They do look really weird. And they curve away from each other. They make like a T. <laughs> okay. Like the Titan Tower in Teen Titans. Oh God. <laughs> But the fact that reptiles don't start growing explains why, if you get a really old crocodile, they are absolutely massive. Mm-hmm. Hence, films like, uh, was it Lake Placid? I haven't seen that. But I bet there's a big uh, crocodile in it. Yes, yes, actually. Nailed it. Three <laughs> points for me. It's a pretty big crocodile. <laughs> don't get that, no. But it's weird because uh, it's, it's shared between the reptiles, which if you take back... If you go back in ancestry, it also includes birds, but they they right. don't continue growing. But they they're also warm blooded, so they've changed somewhat, mm-hmm. and are no longer like the other reptiles. So they don't continue growing. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> okay, well, let's move on to the third question for Braden. Okay, this is a pretty straight straightforward. Braden, yes, are you ready? I I was born ready for this. Really. I believe so. This is your purpose in life, this question. Yep. He's going to die this when this episode it. is done. <laughs> I shot when, uh, when Needhog chewed on the lowermost root of Yggdrasil, I bled out, and I knew my first words spoken were, on the day of May 14th in the year 2018 of, of Lord Odin, I will speak a question, the, the third of its kind, and it, it will, and then I'll die. Ask me the question that I might die, Adam Heap. Yeah, are, are, you, do, are you done? Yeah, right. Yes. <laughs> How? <laughs> this is... <laughs> All right, give me what I need. How many species of cobra? How many species of cobra are there? Yeah. Ballpark figure, go. Nine. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> <laughs> Big Why ones? does one bother? It, there's a lot more than nine. Oh. Times that by three. Oh, give me a second. Uh, I don't have enough toes. That's, uh... Is it t- 27? <laughs> and then times that by 10. Oh, 45. Jesus. 270 species? Yeah, roughly 270. Jeez. So, you, to be fair, Braden, your, 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 ans- your answer was a multiple of the answer I was looking for, so I'll give you that point. Sure, Braden. That's oh, a pity sorry. point if I right. remember. Um, I knew that. I just added up all the digits in 270. Uh huh. To make two nine. And seven. Uh, I was thinking 270. <laughs> two plus seven plus zero equals nine. Yeah. Two hundred and seventy. I, just, I forgot species. to stop doing more math when I got my answer. I, I meant to say 270. You are floundering, sir. <laughs> you're, you're, you are a flounder, Mikhail. Hey, that's a compliment. <clears throat> nah, it's not flounder. Br- Braden, I'm calling we... it now. Yeah, so the reason that there are 270 species, roughly 270 species of cobra, because they're uh, uh, very well adapted to their environment, as most snakes are, hence why there's loads of the buggers. 
and they live in Asia, Africa, and the Middle East, stretching down towards um, Indonesia and that sort of direction. Where does the king cobra live? That is Asian. Yeah. Okay. So it's an Asian species. It's a lot of cobras. That's a lot of, lot of cobras. They outnumber us, okay. guys. We need to do something about it. There's only <laughs> yeah, one if we had humans. to kill every animal that outnumbered us, we would be busy for a while, <laughs> I think. <laughs> but we're working on it. We're working on killing all of them. We're going to get true. there eventually. Killing ourselves. Okay. Question, next question. Next question. Do all cobras have hoods? Um, there's some cobras that like hoods. It's, it's hard because, you know, you got a hood on, you look like a thug, but it's also pretty functional in the rain. I, I, I would say the cobras that are like less than 25 years old, they'll be wearing hoods. But if they live in Silicon Valley, that number goes up to like infinite because everyone there wears hoods. That's a hot take on Silicon Valley <laughs> in San Francisco. Anyways, what's the real answer? Is that your final answer? Oh, big time. Okay. I'm committed. Right, so the answer is no. Not all cobras oh. have hoods. I knew that. But the, Most of them the do. The king cobra does, though. Yeah, the king cobra does. Right. Uh, but the, some examples of ones that don't have hoods are uh, like the eastern coral snakes, desert black snakes... Um, anything in Walteronesia, Egyptii, and Morgani uh, are so very good examples. I have a question, a follow up question then. What is it that makes a snake a cobra as opposed to, say, a viper or something? Ooh, yes. Uh, they all fall under one big phylogenetic group, essentially. Um, they all are venomous. Okay. Uh, they live in that specific area. Uh, that is a very good question. Are they like pit 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 no, snakes where no, they have that? No, they they're, don't. They're, they're don't not. Have no, they're not. They're not. They don't have uh, the heat pits. Essentially, yeah, huh. all venomous. They live in a certain part of the world. They're all genetically um, very closely related. Uh, a lot of times, it does come down to that. Okay, that's a fair answer. Also, Buck? I googled yeah. that coral snake, and it looks buck wild. It looks like a piece of candy almost. It's like the super bright colors. Ooh, piece of candy. Eastern coral snake, but they all—they're all in the family Alapid, Alapidae, okay. uh, which includes snakes that aren't actually cobras as well. That's the funny thing about taxonomy—you can say a group belongs here, but it will actually mean that it's with another group, and it all gets very confusing very quickly. Yeah, I found that also in my research. It's like people think this, 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 and this, but ten years ago, someone was like, "Nah, they have ears," so it's this. And then, like, people don't even agree on it half the time. Uh, that, that could be my 12th question. Okay. Do snakes have ears? Uh, I'm going to say yes, if you count an ear canal as an ear. I'm going to say no, if you don't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Are you just disagreeing to disagree? I'm, I'm picking it up and I'm putting it down. That's uh, oh, all I'm going to say. Well, why did you move it in the first place? I mean... It's got to get moved sometime, right? <laughs> Otherwise, it just oh, builds dust and moss. I'm, now I need to know the answer to the question. Um, they, they, don't, they don't have external ears, no. If you looked at a snake's head, there's no hole. Uh, as opposed Shit. to something like the typical lizard, which has a hole in the side of the head. Uh, mammals I basically have an have argument about this. M mammals because basically Braden the same said thing. dinosaurs don't have ears. Well, but it's like they have holes. Yeah, they do. No, yeah, yeah that was a Brady. joke, guys. That was a that was a gag I did. I can't. I can't. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> it was a funny joke. <laughs> okay. I'm the Marco. You know, it's a joke. Okay. Get the hell out of here! No, you're not. Yeah, I. We both know that I am. But snakes do have inner ears. Um, they pick up vibrations through different parts of their body, and that set that signal goes to the inner ear. But they don't have external like holes for sound to travel oh. into unlike lizards which do um okay what else was i gonna say oh yeah the uh, the bones in the ear of a reptile is different to the bones in the ear of a mammal and it was actually one of the things that distinguished early mammals from early reptiles if you look oh, at sweet. Um, early mammals such as morganucodon you can actually see the transition of the ear bones what we have is the incus malleus and stapes 
You heard of those three? No. <laughs> but we, okay. But we have those three bones out here, tiny little fragile little bones that are they're mostly based around the eardrum. But in reptiles, those form part of the jaw. Oh. And, and what you see cool. when you look at some of these fossils, such as Morganucodon, you can actually see the movement of these three jaw bones shrinking in size and moving back, uh, further back into the head where it joins up with the ear. And you have a lo- loads of loads and loads of these different fossils from different times, so you can actually see how these bones are moving and eventually become ear bones. Oh, so cool. it, it, mammal jaw bones are made up of one bone, aren't they? Yes. 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 Whereas reptile jaws are made up of, of, well, more than one. And it's those Boom. bones that form our ears. How many are they typically made of? Is there like a, like a median number or? What, of, um, for reptile jaws? Yeah. Uh, I couldn't give you that number. Okay. It's a secret that only herpetologists are allowed yeah. to know. Yeah. Well, I'm not a very good herpetologist then. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, is the number 33? You Freemason. Moving on. Okay. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what to respond to that. Okay, where were we? Sorry, numerology joke. I <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking. Yeah, wrong audience. Okay. Somebody's going to get it. Okay, Adam. <laughs> uh, I did say that half these jokes would be based on cobras, but looking at the rest of mine, they're all based on snakes in general. I think okay. part, part of the problem is cobras aren't... D- snakes such as cobras, don't tend to be that much different to your usual snakes. Unless you want to dip into, like, phylogenetics, but I don't want to do that. So we're just going to move also, on to some general means, snake so. questions. Phylogenetics is essentially the study of DNA. Oh. So I, I did a study once looking at Waltonesia aegypti, uh, finding out where, where it originated from, because it's this Middle Eastern uh, species. And obviously yeah. you've got the African and you've got the Asian cobras. And we wanted to find out, did it come from Africa or did it come from Asia? So you, you take the DNA of these animals, produce it, send it off to South Korea where they do some magic. They send it back. And you look at all these DNA sequences and say, oh, look, it's more closely related to this group than that group. Right. Oh, and that's essentially oh. how we do phylogenetics. Is that, is that what the start of the movie The Host is about? I've never seen that movie. It's a South Korean movie where, like, some South Korean scientists are fucking around with DNA and then they just flush it down the toilet or whatever and it becomes a terrible monster that kills a bunch of people. That sounds about right, yeah. 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 That, that was you. That... that was your DNA. <laughs> <laughs> Better not be my DNA. Hmm. It's a very, I mean, very, very... Prop- the DNA you sent him. It's a very, very clean process DNA um, sampling because if, if any other DNA gets in there at all, then it's buggered. Yeah, that makes sense. It's completely buggered. It's got it, the amount of times I had to redo samples because I wasn't getting a clean one. It was infuriating, but an in- a thoroughly rewarding and enjoyable process. That's why when Brayden tried to be a DNA scientist, they had to refuse because they just kept finding DNA from other people all over him all the time <laughs> to the point where it was like they called the police because it was like. <laughs> There were victims from crimes and stuff like that. DNA on his body. Mm-hmm. It's really it was, fucked it up. There's never victims. I just go to a lot of gangbangs and I shake everyone's hand after. <laughs> a lot of With, backpacks. Oh, <laughs> I, want, I want to hands. thank you and I want to thank you for what you did. Yes. <laughs> oh, <laughs> not, not you. I didn't fuck. enjoy that bit. Is that your impression of me? It's, it's so good. accurate. <laughs> <laughs> fuck. <laughs> we did we, some good we, work. We did some good work on those tents. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> Where's the dwarf dressed like a cobra? I want to say, I want to give a real special thank you to him. I thought your hip movement was fantastic. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Fuck. All right, should we move on? Yeah. Oh, we're going to take a darker turn now. <sighs> it's where we thrive. I just got chills. Whew. All yeah. down your body. I you really like the black cut. Co- it made me think of uh, The Black Cauldron. You ever seen that movie? You, have you literally just dismissed my Grease reference and not continued the song? I'm, I mean, I was already on a Black Cauldron reference. I, no, I no my reference you started before. My, my reference started before. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I'm sorry. Um, you better <laughs> shape up. You better, you better shape up. Yeah, there you go. Do, do, do. 
And my heart <laughs> Finally, we snuck you. a grease reference into this show. You better grease up. You gotta understand who my heart is. <laughs> <I'm laughs> You're the grease that I want. I genuinely don't know if we can you be sued the for I want. Like, singing these songs. <laughs> you better grease up. That that's the lyrics, right? You better grease up. Yep. Oh God. Please no. Sure that's it. Anyway, shall we? Um, <laughs> shall we crack on? Yes. How is snakeskin for the clothing industry produced? Uh, so, like, how? How? Okay. So, how do they make snakeskin bags and stuff like that? Oh, is this yours you know or mine? This is mine. I think the way that they do it is they harvest it from like factory snakes, but the factory snakes are actually yeah. Like they, what I'm asking is the process. The process it. they actually get the the skin from the snake. Adam, I'm getting there. All Give right. me a second. All right. All right. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm up on they this. work it. <laughs> they work in factories, but it's like, have you ever wondered if you could have a, a, a like a a cat beef factory, for lack of a better word, where you could just cut <laughs> one part of the cow off and then it grows back? That's what they're doing. So they're shedding their skin, and then they turn that into the clothing. And actually, it's some of the happiest snakes on the planet. But a lot of people don't know that. They have like ensuite rooms and yeah, uh, yeah, know, big time rooms. All, in, all inclusive cocktails on standby. <laughs> they get those. It's like a shrimp cocktail, but it's live baby mice just tied to the rim. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's well, well, unfortunately, it's not quite so luxurious. Actually, shit, it is quite grim. So what they usually do, that they'll have these um, these these farmed animals. Um, usually the larger snakes, so high that. And what they do, they they bring them in, and they mm-hmm. usually bonk them on the head very hard. Oh. Uh, but not that, that's not a killing blow. Sometimes it is. Oh, okay. Sometimes it's not. Oh, god. And then what they do is they they hang up the snake, usually by the neck, and they fill it with water. Oh, god. What? Because what that does is it stretches the skin. So, okay. uh, what can I compare that to? It's like when you put on a pair of shoes for the first time, it's not quite fitted to you, so it, it stretches to your foot, and it stays that mm-hmm. way. So, what they, they, right. they put a hose inside the snake and fill it up, and then once they've done that, they'll be up there for a few hours. And then the snake could still be alive, and they'll just peel the skin off. They'll, they'll make a, a tear around the neck and just, like, like a sock. And then they'll just chuck the snake in a bin. Fuck oh, that's sakes. fucked up. Yeah, I don't like that at all. God, I told you I was going back get to grim. my answer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's. Wow. Oh my god. So I'm so sorry you, th- you had okay. to know that. Do they then like shave the muscle off from it? Like, how does that work? No, no, just take the skin off, and it just comes right off. Well, it has to, takes a bit of tugging. Yeah. Oh god! Like, damn, have you ever, it's awful. <laughs> like Mikhail, have you? I, I I assume then that you've never watched like a like a video of any other animal being skinned. Then, well, I've seen like mammals being skinned, it, yeah. and, and, and and it involves a lot of knife like knife work. It's it's different the way it's done with with snakes. Obviously, the way I described yeah. it to you. But yeah, that's generally how it's done. Well, oh, I god. hate Are that. Are there nicer ways? Like, no. does, is there anyone out there <laughs> yeah. like doing this? With a little bit of humanity? <laughs> no. <laughs> where do they do bread, this? Where do they... The, what, 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 what countries is this in? You already know the answer to that. It's usually Asia. the Asian countries, yeah. 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 So even after all that, even after they've been bonked on the head, uh, filled up with water and then skin, they could still be alive. No. Yeah. After the skinning, even, they're alive? Unlikely, but... That's, that's pretty fucked up. But because they um, the way their body works, they um, their blood flow isn't quite as fast, so that they don't lose blood as quickly. Right. Yeah. Well, okay. Is the next question going to be at least a little bit funny and not depressing? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do that because now I'm crying. A yeah. bit. All right, okay. How do you tell the difference between a legless lizard and a snake? <laughs> I mean, I feel like this is a trick question, um, right? No, no, this isn't a trick question. A legless okay. lizard and a snake. Uh, legless lizards, they have something other than legs, um, but they still have some sort of appendage there, like a fin 
or a spike <laughs> or like a, a nation bone or okay. like just eight penises. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Took a turn. Yeah. Uh, or uh, a knife for skinning and filling with water their fellow fucking snakes. Oh, I was trying to move on, man. <laughs> we can't move on, Mikhail. I this know. is now a cruelty to snakes podcast. He's just, just, just imagine it in a in a funny way. <laughs> yeah, right. you can use them as water cannons. Oh God. Uh... <laughs> okay, what's the what's the real answer? <laughs> Legless lizards blink. Oh, I think you just fucked me right up again. Wow. I that, don't think I've ever huh. seen a snake blink. Snakes don't well, have they don't, eyelids. They have, like, they have like an internal eyelid, right? Like essentially, essentially a clear eyelid, or at least very nope. milky. Snakes, snakes essentially have one scale over their eye. Ooh. Legless lizards have eyelids. There are other differences as well, but if you were looking at one, you thought, ooh, what is that, a snake or a lizard? The first thing I'd look at personally is... Does it have eyelids? Is it blinking at me? Also, yeah. I think there was a law that passed a while ago that uh, I think they have to have it on their ID now, whether they're a snake or a legless lizard. Yeah, because people do get confused very quickly. I know, and you're at a bar, and it's like, is that a snake or a legless lizard? Can we let him in? Can we not? Check the ID, baby. It's right on there. Of course, I could yeah, say it. We live could... in a very backward society where we have to where we have to worry about this stuff, but um, yeah. I, I'm glad President um, Snake Bomber is doing that. <laughs> snake Bomber. <laughs> okay. Damn Snake Bomber. <laughs> he don't ruin my country. <laughs> okay. But this is the point where I could say it's a trick question. Actually, snakes are still lizards. I thought Cobra they were Bomber. Lizard. Cobra Bomber is a lot better. Like, uh, snakes are lizards. Oh. Oh, shit. Yeah. But are all... Snakes are all reptiles, but are they also all lizards? He just said that, yes. Lizards are reptiles. So they both fall under okay. the big group reptiles, and then snakes fall under the group lizards. Okay, I see. I are see, there see. any lizards that aren't reptiles, or reptiles that aren't lizards? <laughs> reptiles that aren't lizards, yeah. Lizards, and, lizards and snakes uh, are in the group Squamata which is quite a long way distant to the other groups, such as the turtles, the crocodilians, and the birds. Ah. And, go, and, and the dinosaurs as well. So they are... Right, right. Yeah. Cool. So hey, um, like a crocodile isn't a lizard, a bird isn't a lizard, but a snake is a lizard. Yeah. yeah. Something, something that I heard of um, a little while ago, um, a friend of the show, Scotty, from Thagomizers, who we had on for Megamorphs number two, um this this was outside of the show but i was talking to them and they were talking that um some th people have bred snakes without scales now they just have a skin layer is that have you heard about that no i haven't heard about that mm. what's the point Th there'd be no use uh, to the fashion industry domestication it's just, just like pets okay. let's just uh let's let's go to the next question okay whose one is this uh mikhail's yes Okay, this is not a very specific question. Well, it sort Good. of is, but it isn't. How many vertebrae do snakes have? How many vertebrae do snakes have? Yeah. I mean, doesn't it depend? Because, like, the longer they are, the more they have. Well, they wouldn't grow a new vertebrae. Brayden, you shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> I think snakes have... It's whatever they're... Whatever their age, no, the number of jaw bones they have times three. That's how many vertebrae they have. So it's different for every snake. No. Oh, fuck. That sounded right, though. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it, it did not sound it, right. It, yeah, you're, you're right. You're right to say that it does vary. Okay. And usually you're looking at between 200 and 400. Oh, how many do humans have? Between 800 to six. Oh, wait, oh, well, we have 12, don't we? <laughs> Sure, that sounds right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that is a significantly larger amount of vertebrae. Is it just so that they can, like, slither around like that? Well, yeah, because if, if they have the same amount of ribs as us, or vertebrae yeah. as us, then they wouldn't move as gracefully as they do. They'd be all chunky. They would yeah. essentially just be like a finger. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just, <laughs> <laughs> Gross. Just a real fancy-looking finger. <laughs> 
Next question. I think that, yeah, we should start calling snakes fancy fingers. <laughs> fancy fingers. Okay. Isn't that the name of a cookie? <laughs> That's lady fingers. Oh, yes, I'd love Anyways. One. Thank you. <laughs> okay, they're in the mail, you bitch. All right. Next question. Let's go. Yeah. Are there any snakes with legs? This is a fucked up question. Because mm. why ask it if it's not yes? You know what I mean? Yes, but um, they are all mutants <laughs> to the extent where the greater snake community doesn't acknowledge them. Um, but there is a team called the X. Oh, dear God. Oh. Men who um, <laughs> are all nice. legged snakes with uh, that, that fight crime. So basically lizards. You can, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, but my that an- is I guess, racist, sir. <laughs> my, my answer is no. There are no legged snakes. Unless, like, there was some weird mutation. That is true, but in a way it's also another trick question. Shit. I knew it. There okay. are snakes with claws. Oh. What? Mostly the more primitive species. Um within the boas and the pythons. So, like, where's the claw? You gotta give me some details it's, here, man. Uh, either side of the cloaca is where the rear legs used to be. So if you... I've, I've seen it on a few uh, different animals, uh, but they have these things called pelvic spurs, and they're tiny little claws on either side of the body. You, you can see them. So they don't have legs, but they do have claws. What's the point of the claw? It's usually a mating thing. And I know you're going to kick off now because I said mating, and that means sexy, sexy. And that you say you mentioned cloaca. That's yeah, yeah. the genitals. Yeah, the Interesting. genitals. Interesting. Um, yeah, I I can see it like you know hooking the other person so they don't get away, or maybe prying open their cloaca or something like that. Something fucked up. Oh, uh, snakes. Yeah, yeah, and and just to just to mess with Mikhail again, going back to the uh, snake skin one. If they can't get the hose into the mouth of the snake, they put it in the other way. Oh, no. God. Fuck off. You're lying. You're I'm lying. Not, I'm not lying. I'm not lying. <laughs> I don't want to know these things. <laughs> right, okay. I want to go back. Put me back in the tree. <laughs> <laughs> Bring Book me back one, to Braden. Idrisil, Where are you? Um, dear. <laughs> yeah. I'm dull. Slit my throat. <laughs> What continents are snakes not found on? Um, easy question. Easy. That That is an easy question, but it's a trick. Because you'd think, okay, so North America, definitely no snakes there. Obviously. I've never seen a snake. <laughs> I've never seen a snake, so no, no snakes here. But what people don't know is that there are actually snakes underwater. And so you you would think I wouldn't say... You would think I would have forgotten about Atlantis, but there's no snakes in Atlantis. But that's not a natural causing thing or caused by natural means. It's a law. No snakes in Atlantis. It's on their like constitution. So anyways, what's the real answer? (laughs) Kale, you dog. (laughs) They're not on Antarctica. Okay. (laughs) Are there any in the Arctic? I guess that's a pretty fair answer. I told you it was easy. (laughs) Are there any in the regular Arctic? Uh, no. That's not a continent, though. The Arctic's not a continent. Does it not count? Oh. No. Fuck me running. <laughs> it's because it's like, it's like all ice or well, something. Well, fuck me in the shoe. Any, it doesn't have any land, I don't think. That might be totally wrong. Mm, yeah, it's ice. But, eh. Yeah. Okay, question, okay, question 10. Last question. I promise you this is mm. the last question. Okay. Not like there's going to be a bonus question or anything like that. No, no, not at all. No, no, no. <laughs> How does a snake avoid choking when eating large food? Ooh, Brayden, this is perfect for you. Okay. So, um... For lots of reasons. <laughs> listen, listen. I only choke women when they ask me. Wow, that's not where I was going at all. Why you gotta make it dark all the time? <laughs> Wait, that's not dark. I'm talking about consensual sexual acts. All right, sorry. The opposite of dark. I've seen your blog. Oh, oh gosh. Choking gosh. women? I, I know, I know. We don't um, have to talk about it. Is this, your so, answer? is this your answer, by the way? Is this your final answer? <laughs> uh, snakes don't actually eat. Snakes just lick their food a lot. And then um, just like, 
they gently like crush it with their throats um but it like it moves they don't eat it <laughs> they just oh, gently g- they massage it and then <laughs> immediately regurgitate it <laughs> they just taste it yeah they're bulimic you see snakes are actually the masseurs of the animal kingdom all those all those mice you've ever seen being eaten by a snake they're just getting a real deep tissue massage from all directions. Uh, the, the snakes are going to let them go. Snakes don't have to eat. They're God's chosen. Yep, that sounds right. The chosen of Needhog. <laughs> Thank you. Correct. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. That counts. That counts as a point. You said it. You can't take it back. Point. Our experts said it, so done. <laughs> it's now canon. It's now real world canon. Or oh, is it another KASU? What? K A S U? Have you never heard of that? No, what is that? Oh my god, you're such noobs. <laughs> oh shit, we called out. Fuck. K A screw up. Ah, oh. K A screw up. That makes sense. Yes. Sort of. Okay, yes. okay, what's the real answer? That was the real answer. K A S U? No. No, no, snakes don't eat. All around tissue massage. I mean, don't let Brayden have this. What's the real <laughs> answer? <laughs> okay, okay. If you ever see a snake with its mouth open, what do you see? Uh, a hole. Big old throat. Yeah. You see, you see a hole at the base of the mouth. Uh, you've got the back of the mouth, and then you've also got this, it's almost like a tube uh, at the bottom of their mouth. And what they're doing okay. when they're eating their prey is that they'll push this hole, this, this tube forward, and stick it out of the mouth. Oh. So when the prey's going in, they've got the, the, the tube is sticking out off to the side so they can breathe through it. It's like a snorkel. Oh. I actually had no idea. That is very interesting. I'm going to be quite honest with you. Whenever I've seen that hole in a snake's mouth, I thought that was some sort of tongue sheath. Nope. I thought, I thought its it was, tongue was in there. I thought it was like a spit gland where they're like pre-digesting stuff on the way down. No, that's silly. That's a silly suggestion. How could you be so silly? Oh, come on. Do they breathe come that on. thing <laughs> normally or is that just like just for when they've swallowed food? Uh, well, it's when they need to breathe. If they got a big item in their mouth and they, they they think, oh, damn, forgot to breathe. They could stick this tube out and voila. But normally they would breathe through their nose. Yes. Okay. Ah, they can go. breathe okay. through their nose. That's too fucking cool. That is very cool, actually. I had no idea. And you huh. were just going to let me let us sit here with my stupid answer about massages. Have you ever seen a snake <laughs> sneeze? No, it's the, it's the funniest thing. <laughs> Wait, is that real? They do, they do sneeze. Well, sort of. I, I've got a pet snake, and when I give her a bath, and she dinks, ducks her head under the water, she comes up, and about two seconds later, it's just little. <laughs> you just see these two spurts of water just, just shooting out. That is, that is funny, <laughs> and That's it's funny when, when a snake yawns as well. That their, their mouth gets really wide. It's quite funny to watch because their jaw is like unhinging, right? No, not just uh, when they open their mouths, it does go quite wide. And they also, you know how the jaw, the lower jaw is formed, so it's basically split in half down the center. Yeah. Okay. And, they, and when they're yawning, they move those bits separately. <laughs> so it looks really weird. Oh, that is very gross. It looks like a predator mouth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. <laughs> anyway, that's questions one through ten done. Oh, thank God there's no more. Twist. Yeah. You. Bonus question. What? What? I don't believe Bonus it. Bonus question? Oh my god. Either you didn't Absurd. tell us about Bonus this question. or I did some whippets right after oh. you did. <laughs> Dear God, there's a bonus question. <laughs> well, what's the bonus I'm, question? I'm getting to it. Don't you worry. It's oh, coming. sorry. It's coming. Okay. It's coming. Uh, it's M- Mikhail, should attention. we both answer this one? Sure. Do all snakes lay eggs? Ooh. You want to go first, Brayden? The answer is no. Because no snakes lay eggs. Um, all snakes are personally shaped by Needhog um, from the roots that he chews of Yggdrasil. It's like, it's like how a bird mama chews up food and then spits it into her baby's mouth. Uh, Needhog chews up the roots of Yggdrasil and then uh, spits it out and the mush becomes snakes. My answer is yes, because I'm a fucking professional, and I like to get things right. Yeah, all snakes lay, lay eggs. 
Although I feel like the answer is no, but I'm just trying to. Braden wins. Fuck. I knew. Braden always <laughs> wins. So. Approximately seventy percent of snakes' legs. What do the other ones do? Just chill out. Uh, the other Live ones are. Uh, it's it's a pro, it's ovo viviparis, which means that essentially the the eggs hatch inside of them. They give birth to live young, and this is usually in reptiles in colder climates because the eggs wouldn't be able to survive in those cold climates. Wait, does that mean that the eggs that are inside their body are still like hard calcified eggs? Re- uh, non-avian reptiles don't lay hard eggs. What? The eggs are soft. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. What about Austra- Australian snakes? Do they lay eggs? Well, yeah. Most of them. Okay. Thought so. Okay. I just, I was really worried that Ricky Ticky Tavy wasn't, uh, <laughs> was uh, all of a sudden a fictional story. Usually it's That's- to do with how, um, if snakes are in mountain ranges, where they're at a higher altitude, they tend to give birth to live young more than snakes further down. So does that mean you could take a snake egg and just squish it between your hands and it would just be like a gusher? Pretty much. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. That's good to know. Shit. <laughs> Fuck. Good okay. to know? It would be Why like is that snake. good to know, Mikhail? Because if you ever find a nest of snake eggs, don't pick them up because you might I just mean, destroy them. They'll probably look like soft and squishy, right? They won't look like typical like chicken eggs? No, they don't really. Uh, they do vary in shape a bit as well. Yeah. All right, that's fair. Hey, anyway, that's the questions done. Okay. Thanks. There's one last question, though, and it is the hypothetical question of the week. Roll sound cue. This week's hypothetical question of the week is brought to you by Adam, because we were talking about it before the recording, and he came up with a really good one. And we uh, had a bad question. one before. Yeah, well, ours was bad. So this is for everybody. Would you rather be a snake with legs or a snake with arms? Keeping in mind that you would keep your human brain. Would we? Or at least the capabilities of your human brain. Adam, would you like to go first? Oh, okay. Yes, please. Right. Arms. Also arms. Wait, no explanation? Just arms? I mean, we'll, we'll explain them once we all know. Who's okay. wh- whose answer is whose, and we start to like you know we can turn it into a fight. I could play. I guitar. think it would be legs for me. Okay. Yeah. And I have a very bad reason why. Yeah. yeah. Explain. And that reason is is strictly so that I could stand up way taller as a snake, like stand straight up. Oh God. So, Fair play. So it's just a snake like hovering in the air. What what sort of snake would you be? King Cobra. I mean, let's get fucking real here. Oh, imagine like an anaconda from the anaconda movie with legs. Oh, dear. <laughs> and it's just like, yo, 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 come at me, bro. That oh, happens in Anaconda just... 4. Yeah, he gets legs. Yeah. Yeah, that's real shit, man. But not very big legs. It's just sort of like he moves regularly and then he's just got these tiny, comical, like baby feet just slapping against the floor. <laughs> Little baby feet. <laughs> That movie did not do very well. No. Okay, what's the explanation for arms, then? Well, opposable thumbs, mate. Play guitar. <laughs> yeah. Stand Both up, very grab good. shit. You could use guns. You could eat your food a lot easier, too. Yeah, there's like, that. shove it in your mm-hmm. mouth. <laughs> and plus, we didn't specify just two arms. I would... Brayden, uh, you no, don't with two go. arms. Here I would go. take full <laughs> advantage of that loophole and become essentially a snake man centipede and just <laughs> just never stop man like, bear running. pig yeah just you're kill like everyone man centipede. half man half snake half centipede <laughs> you're like the biggest the world's most famous snake juggler but you don't juggle snakes you are a snake that juggles i am a snake that juggles other snakes <laughs> the fuck? And but they're the all like part. mating balls. So they're, it's like mating they're my balls children, of and they just like are rolled up, and they are also snake man centipedes, half man, half snake, half centipede, <laughs> and they're juggling their younger siblings. I've lost the Come plot. On, yeah, that's that's beyond ridiculous. That's I can't just silly. Entertain that. You're right. You're right. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. what we learned today, children? I learned that I don't know shit about snakes. Um, I learned that I, I I think I really need to reconsider how much snake skin I wear. I mean, do you wear a lot of snake skin? Uh, 
Mikhail, you've seen me strut a rug up and down location redacted av just absolute poon searching um i don't go anywhere without my snakeskin gloves and snakeskin boots and snakeskin pants and snakeskin shirt and snakeskin mm-hmm, jacket mm-hmm. Just, and snakeskin just, hat just and picture, once just, upon a time you were blessed enough um to witness my snakeskin underoos <laughs> Fuck. Just, just picture a funny snake water balloon and it all works out. I don't like that image at all. <laughs> all right. Next week, we'll be talking about Animorphs number 21, which is called The Threat, <gasps> which is book two of the David books. <gasps> um, Adam, in the interim, where can we find you? Because we can find you in a lot of different places, but where are you most likely to be found on the internet? On the internet, probably the disc, the 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 the, 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 the Okay, yeah, I haven't heard of that, but uh, <laughs> the Discord. Uh-huh. You can find me on there. Um, I don't. I, uh, do you want to put? Have you got a place to put a link on this video? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, we'll we'll do that. Yeah. Happy. It's going to be huge. Do you? Uh, and you also write and more fanfics. That I have certainly gained, do. Uh, uh, just yeah. Look up Adam Heap on fanfiction. And you shall find my stuff there. I'm currently about to start writing book number 61, which will be called The Reach, which has Tobias as narrator. And it spends a lot of time in space with alien things. Because you've been writing a continuation of the main series. Yeah. I'm also thinking about writing a slight backstory to the Sergeant Santorelli character who was introduced in book 54, near the end, when they all went off to find Axe. Okay. So exciting times ahead. Yeah, totally. Well, everyone listening, make sure you look that up if you're looking for more Animorph content, despite the fact that they haven't made any official new stuff in way too long. Exactly. You can find more of our Dork Bajir Chronicles stuff on our podcast page at collectivelegacy.org. You can find us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr. It's just, just look Dork Bajir Chronicles. You'll find it. And you can uh, download and listen to episodes on collectivelegacy.org, um, on iTunes, Spotify, and anywhere uh, fine podcasts are distributed. For the Phantomorphs, I've been Mikhail, the host. I've been Brayden, a continuation of the joke that I told up front that I forgot. And I'm me. Yeah, he's so recognized. It's like Michael Jackson. You just know the voice. You just you know. know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And this has been Live from the Gardens, a Phantomorph podcast about how to be a convincing Animorph. <laughs>welcome to the ad for the show i'm mitch the host of whack talk radio on this show i talk to interesting people about interesting things do you need to know more than that okay fine pretty much we'll talk about whatever my guest is interested in or passionate for sometimes it'll be silly sometimes serious sometimes a bit of both whatever the topic is hopefully we'll find a way to make you that much more of an expert about it you can find us at collectivelegacy.org, along with some other equally awesome shows on our network. New episodes of Whack Talk Radio are every Sunday and Thursday, wherever you find your podcasts. Let us know what you think on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Whack Talk Radio. That's W-E-N-G-H Talk Radio. Whack Talk Radio. Brought to you by... Collective Legacy, a podcast network.